microbiome. We, we've kind of been talking about the microbiome, but we haven't really uh, looked at it in too much detail. So how important is the microbiome and having the right kind of mix of microbes to our health? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important. And um, there's, there's an adage that I've borrowed uh, from Field of Dreams. Uh, and Field of Dreams, I think it was something to the effect of, um, if, if we build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the microbes in our gut, I think that's true as well. If we feed them, they will grow. Um, and if I had to choose a single strategy, whether it's a prebiotic, a probiotic, or a postbiotic strategy, um, if I had to choose just a single one that was going to be most impactful, it would be prebiotic. Um, uh, and, and for more reasons than that, there's also sort of pleiotropic effects when you're giving something upstream versus just say a single metabolite downstream as a postbiotic. Um, but I will say, um, categorically, maybe not everyone has sufficient residual diversity in their gut. Um, some people are, are quite um, uh, deprived uh, in their uh, microbial uh, ecosystems. And you could liken it almost to a bleached coral reef uh, versus what should be there, which is sort of you know, vibrant, colorful, um, aquarium-esque uh, type um, uh, setting. And, and, and those individuals where it's depleted, it's a big question, well, how do you restore a healthy, vibrant ecosystem? I mean, especially if we've been living on these fiber-starved diets for so long and, and maybe you know, even further entrenching those states in therapeutically effective approaches like further limiting uh, fibers and plant-based foods, and maybe, you know, even going all the way to carnivore, uh, which I know there's, there's, um, you know, strong proponents for that. Um, but how do we, how do we reawake, uh, that ecosystem in our gut? And I think in a subset, there probably is a role, uh, for reseeding, uh, the gut, and I use this Scott's turf builder analogy, so this is weed, seed, feed, right? The, the probiotics, that's the feed, that's the fertilizer. Um, and then antibiotics, that would be the weed, and we don't always need those, but sometimes if there's bad organisms like Clostridium difficile. Uh, and then the seed, those are the, the probiotics. Um, there are companies that are working on this problem, and it goes well beyond just probiotics, the type that you might get at a supermarket or a drugstore, even the refrigerated ones that are mostly just food derived bugs that are really part of fermented foods. Mm -hmm. There's some exceptions like bifidobacterium, which truly does come from our gut, but that's one of the notable few. And one that, you know, maybe I'm a little bit more bearish in terms of supplementing, uh, especially specific strains. Uh, but there's other companies that are really delving deep into all these exotic anaerobes, uh, names that many of us can't pronounce, like <laughs> Fecalibacterium prosnitzii. <laughs> I mean, real yeah. mouthfuls. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Clostridium cluster four and 14a species, the, the ones that are actually making butyrate. Um, and uh, I think it's a really important nut to crack uh, for those people in particular that are depleted. But again, coming back to if I had to choose a single strategy at large for a population, it would be really to emphasize the diet piece and the prebiotic piece in order to restore um, healthy ecosystems in the gut. I mean, would you see that probiotics would actually work? So the idea is you would take the probiotic and then uh, the microbes start growing and then you stop taking the probiotic because they're entrenched. I mean, would that be the hoped outcome? Uh, so, um, just as, uh, if you feed them, they will come is to the native, uh, microbes in our gut. So too is, um, taking perhaps some probiotics. Most probiotics are, 
uh, what are called alloxanus, another sort of mouthful of a word, but that just means they pass right through, as opposed to the autochthonous organisms that are natural residents uh, in the gut. Um, and they're quite literally a drop in the bucket. They may do some things uh, on the way through, but it's, they will never become entrenched, uh, so to speak. Uh, it's these exotic, more exotic ones that are, um, have the possibility of becoming entrenched, but only in so much as uh, you feed them the foods that they like. Uh, and so I think there's a huge future uh, especially for these companies that are thinking of how to restore ecosystems with um, what are called live uh, uh, um, biotherapeutic products um, to combining these mixtures of bugs with uh, powerful prebiotic uh, sources. And I think when, when those two come together, we'll have much more powerful therapies. So, how do we how do we look at what our gut microbiome looks like at the moment? How, I mean, how, how do we look at that? And uh, you know, like stool sample, but would that give you a good view of everything in the gut? Yeah, uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't. So the, uh, the the stool that comes out the other end has been a really imperfect proxy uh, for what's happening in the entirety of the gut, and then some ways it's uh, an integrator summation of all the bugs through the gut, uh, live and dead by the time they come out the other side. Uh, many of the organisms in the under, uh, upper gut are there. And if you use really sensitive methods uh, that target those bugs like PCR, you'll find them. Uh, but if you're using a broad brushstroke of um, say 16S RNA analysis, um, uh, or metagenomics, uh, those upper uh, bugs will, upper gut bugs will be overwhelmed by orders and orders of magnitude uh, of the bugs in the gut and the, and the colon, um, you know, six orders of magnitude or more uh, yeah. in terms of the, the uh, how concentrated the upper gut is for uh, bacteria versus the lower gut. So the solution there, um, during time uh, at the foundation, we we're working very closely uh, with groups uh, for sampling the upper gut. So um, Gary Tierney, Mass General, uh, has some really powerful new ways uh, and, and other groups as well, um, uh, using capsules and very thin endoscopes that are the size of, um, you know, uh, really thin spaghetti that like mm -hmm. even go through the nose uh, and are able to sample yeah, not so fun. <laughs> not so fun. <laughs> you've, ever had, you've ever had a nasal gastric tube, but certainly better than having an upper endoscopy, which is, you know, caliber right. this big um, and doesn't require sedation. Uh, so it's world's better. Um, and I think as these new technologies come online, it will be literally a brave new world of exploration and open up... Um, really powerful new ways of understanding how the gut is working uh, and understanding will lead then to new ways of intervening.